Oh, look at that. Kirk D. Cousins set to join us. The uh, Minnesota Vikings quarterback and star of the Netflix series. He joins us on the program. What did you think when Netflix came to you and said, hey, we want to do this with you, Marcus Mariota, and Patrick Mahomes? I had a lot of questions, Dan. <laughs> uh, the, big, the big one that made me feel comfortable is they said, you'll have the ability on the back end to approve the content. And I said, okay, because I've been burned a lot <laughs> in the past when, you know, people uh, have access and then you don't get to see what they do with it and then they take it a direction you didn't think was, was happening. So the chance to see the content, approve it, was a big deal. And then the fact that NFL Films was the, was the you know, the middleman, if you will, filming it and editing it, I just felt there was a lot of trust there, knowing that they would know how to handle it, how to do it. And then a big one was just their ability to – do it in a way that was non-intrusive so that people in our organization didn't feel like it was obnoxious or in their way or affecting our, our team as we went through the season. So it was done in a, in a great way. Couldn't have been done better. And um, obviously when you have a positive season, win the division, have a lot of close wins, it made for a great story. So, um, you know, at first I was a little, like I said, I had a lot of questions, but uh, a lot of those questions got answered quickly. And I thought, what the heck, let's do it. What's uh, the reaction been from the family? Oh, it's been great. I think they've enjoyed – it's funny because we talk about how fans have been able to see a little bit more behind the scenes, but it doesn't stop there. It's really family, too. Uh, I tell them a lot. You know, they're around a lot. But there's still so much that they don't see, don't know, aren't a part of. And I think even they watching it, you know, my brother, my parents, my sister, they all say, boy, we didn't realize it was like that or like this. So <laughs> – it's been a real positive thing. Got a lot of good feedback, and um, you know, it was a privilege to be a part of it. You know, it it humanized you, which is kind of strange. We don't we look at you as a quarterback, not a person, and then this allows us to see the person behind the quarterback who who is the quarterback. Yeah, no doubt. I think that was part of the goal was to allow people to see all that goes into it, and. Um, and the impact it can have when you win, the impact it can have when you lose, and how it affects you. And, and, you know, fans get a great look in for three hours on Sunday, but to give them a look in the rest of the week, I think is really cool. And, um, you know, Netflix had other sports shows that have done well, whether it was the Formula One, the tennis, the golf. And I think it was time for, you know, the NFL and football to get out there as well. And so this was a great way to be able to do it. Mahomes' language, though, is a little shaky if you got the kids around watching this. <laughs> well, he's an awesome guy and uh, really enjoyed getting around him the couple of times I've been around him, especially at the premiere that we had a few weeks ago. But as we left the theater, uh, he, he put his arm around me and kind of joked. He said, yeah, I got to clean up the language. <laughs> I laughed. I said, you're good, man. You know, I'm, I'm in an NFL locker room just like you are. And, Honestly, it you know it may not be the best thing, but it probably is a more accurate reflection of what it's like in the NFL than uh, than if it was all PG. So uh, um, you know, he was the first to say it, and uh, I'll probably wait a f- couple years to show it to my boys because of that. But you better believe they'll be seeing it. At some point. <laughs> Have you ever said you know watch the language during a game if if somebody's using any kind of language? <laughs> What a great question. I've never been asked that. Uh, no, I've never told anybody to mind their language. Uh, well, that's not a bad idea, Dan. Maybe we could start doing that. I could be, the, you know, people tell me I dress like a dad. I act like a dad. I could just carry that over to just, you know, telling everybody they're a potty mouth. But, uh, no, you know, and even it, I'll slip out of me too. You know, when, when uh, you get frustrated, you better believe that there's some words that come out that I regret. So it's a part of, uh, you know, part of the grind of football and, uh, you know, certainly you, you try not to make it a habit. What did you think when uh, Aaron Rodgers left the div- uh, division? Well, the neighborhood changed a little bit. You know, I remember when I first signed in the NFC North in uh, 2018, and, and you know that, you know, there's a guy named Aaron Rodgers, you know, one state over who's who's pretty good. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I thought he was always a, a great challenge to go against. In a way, it was really fun, you know, going against one of the best to ever do it twice a year. Um, you know, I, I thought that was a real privilege. And then now that he's moved on, I think you're always interested to see, okay, you know, what's next. And it's not just, it's not just Green Bay with Jordan Love, but I think even Chicago with Justin Fields, you know, you see the talent and the ability and, and uh, then what Detroit is doing in this year that Jared Goff and their offense had last year, you know, you realize there's a lot of up and coming players and 
I've been around this league long enough to see how, you know, the next stars are coming. The minute a, a Rivers retires, there's a Justin Herbert on the way. So, um, you know, I, you know that to be true, too, in your own division. Talking to Kirk Cousins, Vikings quarterback. We had uh, Steve Young on a couple of days ago, and he said the days of Peyton Manning and Dan Marino, that kind of quarterback, those are long gone, that we won't have the pure pocket passing quarterback. What do you think? So I've asked that same question to many people because I happen to be a pocket passing quarterback. Yes. So I'd like to know if my I'd like to know if my job's gonna be extinct. So uh so so uh Matt Cavanaugh, who played fourteen years, I think he might have played with Steve Young or coached with Steve Young. Um, you know, he was my quarterback coach in Washington. So I asked Cav, I said, you know, you think the days of like being a pocket passer are over and this was years ago and he said, Kurt you know, certainly being able to move around is an asset, but he said, if you can't from the pocket, go through a progression, see cover, see the field, recognize protections and blitzes and throw with accuracy, it doesn't matter what else you can do. And if you can do those other things, that's a big if, then absolutely to have that other ability is an added bonus. But he said, you better be able to throw with accuracy and do all the things that pocket passers who are elite can do. And I think that was a great point, that at the foundation of it all is you got to be a pocket passer. And if you can do that, then add that trait, and I think that's a huge bonus. And I even asked that question of a, of a, of a retired quarterback this offseason that I met with. I said, you know, do I need to become more of a, of a runner and, and, uh, and an off-schedule player? So that's an area of my game I'm always trying to improve. And he said, well, he said, I knew when I hurt my knee, I could still go out and throw for 300 yards and four touchdowns. But if I was a running quarterback and I hurt my knee, I really wouldn't be able to be the guy that mm. you know I was being paid to be. And so he said, really, from the salary cap perspective, from a strategic perspective, quarterbacks can still be a great pocket passer even when they're beat up. But it's hard to be that elite off-schedule runner and playmaker if you're beat up. And so he said, I always felt like it was better for my team if I knew I could throw from the pocket because of what I could do even if I was beat up. Help me understand the context of this. Justin Jefferson was asked about the top five quarterbacks or didn't include you in the top five quarterbacks. And then your reaction to that was, hey, he's got his opinion. Do I have that right? Yeah, I didn't even see the context either. I didn't see how he was asked or or what his response was. I'm sure he's just shooting from the hip. And uh, I know that I'd love to uh, have a year together with him where next year when he lists off the top five, (laughs) you know, my name comes to the top of his mind right away. But, but do uh, you think you're a top five quarterback? Uh, I think it's a good question. I think it's a little bit where, and this, this is uh, something I even say would be debatable. I, I look at it and I go, there's a little bit of like Mahomes at the top. And then there's like a lot of other guys down to like much deeper than five, if you will. And then there's kind of another, there's another, uh, you know, deal where you got guys who are developing and working their way through it. I think we all have great games. We all have the clunker games. And, um, you know, I, I think that um, quarterbacking is so much about winning. And you got to win football games to kind of get put into that upper tier of being a top five guy. And, you know, we, we were in the playoffs last year. We lost our, our first playoff game. And so it's hard to be put in that category if you're not playing in conference championship games and playing in Super Bowls and winning Super Bowls. And so, that's really where, you know, for me, it's all about winning and team. And I think, I think you're stalling. You're stalling on giving me an answer there. You know, Dan, I don't think it's very uh, helpful for me in any way <laughs> to give you a direct answer there. <laughs> you're welcome to ask the question, but I'm, I've been around the block enough to know okay. that, uh, all right. it doesn't help me much. <laughs> Veteran maneuver. If Netflix asks you, are you going to answer their question? Well, I, Dan, Dan, I have a right to edit all the time. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. <laughs> uh, well, uh, always great to talk to you. Hope family's good, and thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Kirk D. Cousins joining us. I was wondering if he would say, yeah, I'm a top-five quarterback. We're trying to make some headlines here.